is YouTube War Stew here with my breakdown review of episode 3 of the Legends of Tomorrow Shogun. Didn't disappoint. This series is the only consistent show that's consistent as well as fun at the same time. So it pretty much picks up where it left off last week with Vixen blaming the time travellers everyone in the, in the Wave Rider for killing our man but later on she figures out that it's the same people that the legends have been looking for so it's almost like she has joined the team to replace Rip Hunter and also Nate Haywood is kind of joining the team to replace Rip whilst he's gone he's probably lost in time is my evaluation if you haven't already Please like, subscribe and comment about what you think. So in this episode we go into Japan in 1641. So it's a prehistoric medieval times, I guess you could say. But it's a very kind of old time that the episode was in. Um, how did we get here? Um, well, Citizen Steel kind of got his powers at the start and Atom was trying to teach him how to use it. And it caused the kind of wave rider to get in some kind of crash and Atom went out after him and they landed in uh, Japan in 1641. Uh, Atom got taken and captured, captured by uh, the kind of Japanese samurais, I guess you could call them. And Nate Haywood landed next to some, uh, I can't remember her name, some girl who he later on has some kind of sexual relations with I guess you could say during this episode quite an interesting episode um, Sarah Lance and is her name Kendra I'm not sure the, per the person plays Vixen I think her name's Kendra I'm not too sure uh, it's kind of got a fet like a female strength trying to push the feminist kind of women are strong which is really good as uh, Sarah Lance White Canary is my favourite character within this programme and I think she's clearly the main star. It was interesting that Ray Palmer did the narration at the start of the episode which so far they've changed it every single episode. So the legends eventually came down and found them so they had to get Rip, sorry, they had to get Ray back and then they discovered Ray didn't have the suit so they had to get his suit back and he had to get Nate Haywood back but he didn't want to go until he caused the beef that uh, the Samurais would have them with this girl, so it is a pretty straightforward episode. There was a lot of banter between Heatwave and um, Vixen about ninjas uh, not being real and stuff, so that, that was, it was kind of funny, fun, fun kind of episode. But what was interesting is why this was all going on. Dr. Stein and Jackson were left on the ship to repair it, ironically. I just think that's due to a kind of CGI issue, so they don't have to use Firestorm. But Mr. Barry Allen the Flash had something to say. He left a message which he didn't want anyone else on the ship to know from 2056. Given that this series is kind of based around the crossover, I presume this has something to do with the Dominion kind of a uh, Dementors kind of invasion that is coming, seeing as Jackson and Martin Stein they were kind of a bit had a bit of anxiety after hearing this message and we didn't get to hear it so I presume this has got something to do with the flash possibly the reverse flash but I presume it is to do with the crossover potentially so in order for them to defeat the samurai master I can't remember his name they had to essentially blow up the atom suit so I think the empathy here was on them trying to tell Ray that he is a hero without the suit and he doesn't need the suit which is kind of cool for him, but I can see the suit coming back. I mean, all he has to do is travel back in, travel back to a different time and get the suit there. Or he's most likely going to make a new suit. And uh, Commander, not Commander Steel, Citizen Steel was named Citizen Steel, I was supposed to say, but he doesn't know how to control his abilities at the moment. So it's going to be quite interesting to see where that goes. I mean, if you follow it up on the internet, you would see that his suit is blue when he gets it. And in the crossover, he's got his suit there. So as each episode goes on and on, we will see the suit appear and he has developed his 
kind of abilities more. I like the di like the, the dimension of having Vixen in the show, as she's already a kind of superhero from um, from the Justice Society of America, and um, that's pretty much what I thought of the episode. It was more of a fun kind of episode. It's really cool seeing uh, Sarah Lance being um, a samurai. She was a standout actor as she always is. And it's going to be quite interesting to see where the show goes from here. I mean, uh, the next episode, they've got the zombie Nazis, so that's going to be quite cool. Be interesting to see if he gets his suit back. I've actually got no negative... No, there was, there was nothing wrong with this episode. It was just, I suppose you could say it was a filler, because not that much happened, but they're just trying to build the kind of backstory of Nate Hayward and kind of show you different parts of history which is it's, it's a time traveling show so that's it's going to happen most of the time which is one thing that I love about the show but is Rip Hunter going to come back is he lost in time does anyone know what the message meant and obviously because it's a samurai time there was a bit of an easter egg between, um, uh, easter egg regarding the katana who was in the arrow who was in the suicide squad in the arrow show so the sword was named after katana and katana's family if you didn't pick up on that you should i uh, i can't actually remember the surname but i can't pronounce it but yeah it was it was basically a wink at katana from the suicide squad so that was pretty cool uh, it was cool seeing ray trying to be a samurai a bit of a fail but he tried his best but anyway guys, please like, subscribe and comment and this is my breakdown review of Shogun or Shogun, Shogun, Shogun I think it was and uh, I'll see you in another video, peace.